salt. We're not here for me. We're here for you. Foam earplugs. To fix your bum eye. Ultimate comfort for women with smaller ear glands. <laughs> okay. She cooked something last night that was just horrible, and I told her she hit me in the eye, and <laughs> trying to hide it from the cops. <laughs> no, he got smacked by a branch. By a tree limb, I was cutting the grass, and he come back hit me right in the eye. It's not the first time that's happened. No, it's not. I got hit <laughs> by a, a mulberry. mulberry tree. Anyway, I've been coming by here, and we've probably been down this road a million times. Never. Never noticed. She don't even know what we're looking at. I have no idea. And if it's cool, you'll see this. I haven't had time to put my hair up. This is how close it has been to the house. So uh, we're going to go check it out and uh, see what she thinks about it. Been down this road a bazillion times. Never knew. This is so cool. Oh, I can't wait to show you. <laughs> so what is it? Who is it? Why is it here? It's, there is somebody buried on the corner, and we can actually go in. I don't have to jump. How in. did you find this? I was coming down this road, and I looked over, and I seen the fence, and I was like, "What's in the fence?" So when I turned, I seen a headstone. As far as I know, it could be a dog. I don't think it actually looks to me like two graves. By the way, hey, thanks for taking that one for the team. That's cool, Tommy. That's a neat little find. Just a Hughes Family Cemetery. It's Dennis H. Hughes, uh, born November 30th, 1815. He died October 9th, 1876. And the other one is Zachariah Hughes, and he died in 1894. Them are the only two that's in here. Really? Yeah. He was 60 years, 10 months, and nine days old. How old was the other dude? Uh, Zachariah, 47. Dang. Is it father and son, or? Uh, yes. Wow. Dennis H was the father. Matilda. Died in 1896, but she is not buried here. Let's see where she is. She is, uh. She's I hope y'all can hear him. Traffic's pretty she loud. She was 74. She was born in South Carolina. She is at Mountain View Baptist Church in Gainesville. Yeah. It's like she might have got remarried. That's a cool find, Tommy. I can't believe we've lived here all this time and <laughs> had no idea. Well, I, I noticed it, I don't know, a couple months ago, and I keep forgetting about it. And uh, we were coming out this way, and I was like, let's just stop by and check it out. Well, that is neat. Good job. Found something. For all you couldn't pay me to live in Roswell, because of the traffic. Oh, God, beautiful. It is beautiful. I don't like the traffic, though. For all you, for all of that, this place is so pretty, and I think that's why we keep, end up coming back because there's so much to do here, and it's beautiful. I mean, the whole downtown area is perfectly designed for just taking a stroll. Oh wow! Oh my gosh! Look at that. This is the faces of war. Yeah. And it's right out beside the. Now. City Hall. City Hall, whatever you call it. Man. That is so cool. That is very powerful. Okay, so a little bit of a glare here. Look at the detail. Oh my gosh. Get some honeybees. Right here, getting some water. Yep. Love the bees. I got it. I got it. Gosh, 
this is so beautiful. We were just driving through and saw this and figured we'd stop and, but this is a Blue Star Memorial. There's a, oh look, did you notice the bricks? I did. And then there's this. I don't know if I'll be able to get it because the shadows, but thoughts by a young veteran. The years others knew as youth, I spent learning the meaning of death. The times others spent learning to love, I passed hoping to live through endless nights. The moments others remember as last in classrooms, I remember as forgotten hopes. Long ago crushed by the reality of war, the unfulfilled dreams of others are yet to be thought by me since I am in search of my elusive youth, looking for years lost in combat, which are no more and will never be. And it's also a Gold Star Memorial. And y'all might remember when we went to Curahy, that was my first time ever going to a Blue Star Memorial. This memorial, Faces of War, is a gift to the city of Roswell, given in honor of all who served their country during the Vietnam War and the families who supported them. So pretty, so worth going to. Just got all the branches represented. Yeah. Do what? <clears throat> oh, the memorial bricks too. Yeah. Well, these all say Memorial Day 2001. Well, this guy was first sergeant, 66, 67. 101st Airborne, 65, 68. Wow. Even their damn city hall is glorious. It is. Nice trails. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call them trails, but <clears throat> nice brick pathways. Yes. Yeah. It's like there's some art sculpture or something over there, too. Yeah. Squirrel. Hey, friend. Hey, little buddy. Should have brought you some peanuts. Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, I know that. <laughs> that is so neat. Hey, this was created during the peak of the COVID-19. This thing symbolized the turmoil of the disaster swirling all around us in the quarantine. Formed from driftwood and scrap metal. It's a cyclone and a home comfort from taste of chaos. Probably didn't pick up any of that with your facing away and low ass voice. That's pretty cool. I've got all these pretty little lights. I bet it's nice at night. No way the picture's gonna do it justice, but this oak tree is freaking enormous. Hug that tree, baby. In case you didn't read the sign, this was done by the Eagle Scouts. Oh, the path? Yeah. Good job, boys. Well, welcome back to Travels with Tommy and Lori. Welcome back. Today we're at the Smith Plantation in Roswell, Georgia. This is the last on our list. Yep. I tend to deal with love in a positive uh, way with a t positive force. Don't look as majestic. No, it's not quite as big as the other two. And the grounds are not quite as uh, pristine as they were at, oh, what was the one? Not Bullock Hall. King, Roswell King. Whatever name that house Yeah, whatever was. name that thing. Anyway, <laughs> but they're all, we've noticed that all three of them are so different in the way that they're landscaped and the, even the way that they look. You know, this one doesn't have the uh, gardens, but it's got these beautiful- Barrington. Barrington Hall, ah. good job. <laughs> <laughs> but it has all these beautiful trails and big, huge shade trees. Yeah. And, it's glorious. We're gonna go and take a tour of the house, then we're gonna take yep. a tour of the grounds. And from <laughs> my hair. And it's hot. It's from, it is hot. But it, I mean, it's Georgia. It's gonna be hot. It's in mid, low to mid 90s. Yeah. Humidity's about 300. <laughs> Archibald was born in 1801. Anne was born in 1807, and they're both born in Savannah. So Archibald comes from a family of plantation owners. So he grew up on a plantation in the Savannah area. And of course, he took up the same 
occupation that his grandfather and his, his father had. So when he became 21, he managed one of his family's plantations and he inherited slaves. He inherited a rice plantation because along the East Coast, those were rice plantations. And rice is not easy to grow. No, that's true. Gotta have people who know what they're doing. But he was dedicated to that. And in 1830, he married Anne and they started their family. Their first child was Lizzie. She's a woman standing here. She was born in 1831. The second child to live was Willie. He was born about 1834. And then that was the extent of their family on that plantation in Savannah. And while they were there, a friend of his by the name of Roswell King was sent up to this area by the bank that he worked for because they wanted to establish a branch of the bank here because gold had been discovered not far from here. Right. And he came through this area, he really liked it. So forget about the lot I got. I like in the way that Chattahoochee River is running through here. I'm going to build a mill on the banks of the river. So he goes back to Savannah and he talks to friends and convinces them to move up here and invest in the mill. Archibald says, okay, because that rice plantation is not doing as well as <laughs> he wanted it to. So he moves up here in 1838. So um, he bought 300 acres of land in this area. And he lived up here somewhere when he first came. And also the 21 slaves that he brought with him also lived up here as well. He bought this plot, but he didn't do anything with it in 1838. But in 1844, he started building this house no, wow. here, which is closer to the center of town. And that was because his family had grown. He had another daughter and he had another son. So now they had seven people they needed a bigger house. Yeah. So the house uh, was built in 1844. They moved in in 1845. So it's 176 years old. The floors that we're standing on are the original 176-year-old wow. pine floors. Those doors are 176 years old. They're walnut, and they were harvested from walnut trees. You know, the wood was harvested from walnut trees in the area. This is the Pahala. It's so cool that everything's original. It is. No it replicas. Is very, very odd. Willie's trunk. What'd you say? I said they got all the resized PM over there. I can't say it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not. Shut up, Tommy. And the wallpaper. Oh, little high chair. She was saying that they, when uh, Arthur and his wife redid everything, they put the kitchen in. Oh my gosh. 
So I'm gonna stop this video right quick so I can get a little bit of a closer look. The old TV set, Bing Crosby Silent Night, White Christmas. Surprise there's not a Victrola yeah, in no. here. All right, I'm gonna stop this video right quick so I can look at the books. A lot of Bibles and sermon books. So cool. Wonder what the oldest book in here is. So we came up the stairway. Like some Parisian art. Oh, yeah. Definitely Parisian. Okay, oh, that is so cool. This is the wallpaper that was covering the walls up here for 50 years. Look at the detail in it. Wow. This was Mamie's room. This was the wallpaper. And here, And just for the sake, in case I accidentally end up cutting it out, Mamie was the cook that uh, Arthur and his wife hired to cook for them. And when they passed away, it was in Arthur's wife's will that Mamie get to stay here for as long as she lived. And that wasn't until, she didn't die until 1994. So, she got to be a part of all of this. That's really neat. This was the two daughters' room. They never married, and from what I understand, this is where they died. Some more books. The Encyclopedia of Cooking. Ooh, I'd love to have that. This place is so cool. Letters. Oh, look at the stationery. That's beautiful. Love letters from Arthur Smith to Mary. Wow, that was a long letter too. <laughs> I still have some of me and Tommy's love letters from fourth grade. This was the master bedroom. And again, guys, this is all original furniture, everything. Everything that is here belong either to Archibald Smith or to his uh, son, Arthur. <laughs> TV in the bedroom, that was really, that was not heard of either. Probably. Not back during that time. 50s. They didn't get married till they were both up in years. Right there. Right there. That's cool, but that was, that was her corsage. Wow. Until death do us part. And this is the only bathroom in the house and Arthur and Mary had it installed when they renovated in 1950 something. 19 years. 
Oh, I'm sorry, 1940 right here. Yeah. When they have that fancy kitchen booty down there. Yeah. This is room, but I call it the traveler's room. And oh, wow. And travelers were out here at night, and they found this room, they could just go in and take a nap. I think this is the first time we've ever seen anything isn't like that, that isn't it? And they call it the passage room because usually the travelers were ministers okay. who were traveling the circuit. That and, is so neat. Um, everything was in here, including the little necessary jar. <laughs> 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 and the next morning, they would get up and knock on the door and thank the family for having slept. And all the family wanted was what was the news from where you travel. Oh, wow. And that was how they paid for their lodging. So I call it an 1850s She was a great, I don't know if you call her guide or volunteer or what. She said all of these buildings are open. So this was a guest house. Well, that one says employees open or only. Open. So I guess they're not all open. There's one behind you. Oh, that's neat, too. So this is one of the slave cabins. Hmm. I guess that was a sleeping platform up there. Mm -mm -mm. I am not sure. Huh. Whatever that is, Tommy found it. Oh. oh my gosh, it's like so cool in here. Like temperature cool. Did you put some money in the uh, box? Oh, <laughs> so that was a donation box. This had to have been like a refrigerated house too. This was um, used for the boiler that made hot water. Wow. It's so amazing how each one of these have had like their own unique layout, um, history, grounds, all that. It's really cool to see. I think this is the, this one has the most of, for the outbuildings. And, yeah, it's like a damn city going yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really is. I'll turn you around. Like a city street. You gonna walk it into does. town or something. This was the guest, back side of the guest house. And then there is the cook's house up there. The barn. Something else. Not sure what that was. Yeah, we couldn't get in that one either. Got a nice pavilion down there. Don't know what those were. Maybe just out outbuildings, I guess. But again, everything is original. The only thing that has been changed at all was the front of the house that uh, when Arthur Smith and his wife renovated it, they changed the front of it. And they put a bathroom and a kitchen in. So this was the cook's house. Everything was done in here. And then they would take it through the back door into the dining room. Little corn dollies up there. I'd like to get my hands on some of that cast iron. So while the grounds are not as ornate and uh, botanical as Barrington Hall, they're still beautiful in their own right. And they have done a fantastic job at landscaping this. I mean, look at that, it's a pretty little butterfly garden. There's some cucumbers and stuff growing up there. We spied them on the way in. Yeah, they got some chives in there. Ooh, chives. Everybody gotta have four for you. Yep. Yeah. I know, they look beautiful. Those are the jumbo marigolds. We grow marigolds too. Oh, wow. There's one hanging down there. Yep. Some tomatoes. Those look like San Marzano tomatoes. Okay. 
big herb garden. Doesn't say stay out, so y'all know I like plants and I like looking at herbs. They got mullion growing, chives, sage. Blood root. This is a witch's garden. <laughs> kind of is sorrel. Yep. Yep. Purple cone flowers. Cone this flower. look, this, yeah, I said purple cone flowers. Yeah, this Red uh a lot of this is used in uh spells. Lemon mint. Yeah. Oh, it's nice and air conditioned in here. So this is all stuff that was uh in the barn when the city took over. <laughs> that was uh, one of the original, that was the original owner's daughter. Neither of his daughters married. No, unfortunately, they, their bows had went off to fight in the war, so the tower had been run. Laundry Kevin and I like to have that. Woo wee. This place is just amazing. I think this is um, the most authentic we've ever seen. Yeah, they get rid of Yep. I need to put a donation in the donation box. Oh, brooms. I ain't saying nobody was a witch, but I'm saying somebody was a witch. <laughs> I know, I did too. Both of them. Good job there, Tommy. Right here is a liquor barrel. Ooh. Alcohol, 188 proof. Come from uh, Kentucky. Oh, wow. Wonder what that was. Uh, let's see. That was all sitting up. I think it was a, a liquor bill. And then there's an apple press for making cider. Yep. Picking, shelling, and pressing. Feeding the plantation. This is a really cool place. Yeah. Totally, totally worth coming to see. So if you're ever in downtown Roswell, can you check out one of the mansions? Don't think seen one, seen them all, because that's so not the case with any of these. Looks like a bird's nest. They're all different, completely different. And I and I honestly I have to say though, uh, Bullock Hall, or the first one we went to, the outside of it was impressive, but I don't think that it honestly compares to this one or Barrington Hall. Barrington Hall is probably the the nicest. I don't. Yeah, but I, I don't know but this I, one. I, mean, I like all the original artifacts. Yeah. In that one. That makes this one so special, going in there and knowing that that place was sealed up it's after. Had hoarders from 1840. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't throw anything nope. away. They, when uh, Archibald Smith died, or his wife died, they sealed the whole place up, boarded it up, you know, and, or no, it was when the sisters died. Yeah. When the sisters died, they sealed the whole place up. Nobody went into it until Arthur took it over in 1940. And then Arthur didn't throw anything away. He added to it, to the collection. And then when the city bought it in 1986, that was when the stuff in the attic was discovered, so. It's just really cool. It's a really cool story. Also, once again, going to give a huge shout out to the Roswell Garden Club. Y'all do some beautiful work. Beautiful. Yes, Breathtaking. Beautiful. Thank you. Just got back to the car. Opened up the door and it was like being smacked in the damn face. 108. So Tommy brought me here. We'll see. We'll see what they got. He picked the place, so yeah. 
We are in Alpharetta. Tommy, why are you lie every time your mouth opens? <laughs> why are you always telling a You why, looked it up. <laughs> why are you always telling a lie? So the Chinese and the Turkish are playing volleyball. So I told her that the Turks had been at volleyball, but she looked it up. <laughs> Such an asshole. One-eyed Willie. Give this place props for a uh, sports bar vibe. <laughs> so that looks pretty sexy. I got the Italian beef. And it, it's good. So hopefully it is. There's Tommy's sexy plate. Looks good. Pickles. In the grocery store. Looking for one eyed Willie's my wash. That I look gnarly. I can't even find any visine. The hell? Let's check the teeth area? I don't, I don't know. I know this area. You can't tell me nobody here, like, smokes pot and they don't carry visine or anything like that. Suspicious. We found it. Conspicuously, it was in the eye section. What'd you say, One-Eyed Willie? I said, this solves your problem. This Max Norbacher. It's earplugs for you. <laughs> you can even get the pink ones if you want. Oh my God. How about you just like go get a sleep it's, study? They even say this. Dream girl. Hey, look. Soft. We're not here for me. We're here for you. Foam earplugs. To fix your bum eye. Ultimate comfort for women with smaller ear glands. <laughs> okay. Well, well all, all right. right. <laughs> I got a <laughs> blue moon and Tommy got a Coke. <laughs> I thought he looked cute with his little one eye Willie glasses on. <laughs> Their fried pickle pickles were pretty damn good. Yes, they were. They wasn't salty. Um, the homemade ranch was delicious. The uh, burger and fries I got were a burger and fry, but they were really good. My Italian, I'd never had an Italian meat sub before, so I figured I'd try it. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was, or I'm sorry, hot beef Italian. I don't even remember what you said. Yeah, it was, it was really <laughs> good, though. The Blue Star Memorial kind of got me to gills. My dad is a Vietnam vet. He lost his best friend in Vietnam. So it always, it always kind of catches me in the fields anytime we happen up on something like that yeah, so it was a great memorial it was well done um it, it, it was unexpected because we, we was just parking to walk to the house and we walked through there which was really really nice the house was really cool um when arthur and his wife mary took possession of it in uh 1940 1940 she wanted the front reconstructed to reflect uh, Gone with the Wind, Tara. Tara. Yeah. So he did that because that's what he did. He was an architect. Yeah. So, I mean, it, but it was really, it was really kind of special just to go in there and see the original stuff. There was nothing there that was a reproduction. Right. So everything that you see, aside from the fake food and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's real eggs. <laughs> was there when Arthur and his wife took possession of the place in 1940, and then again when the city of Roswell took possession in 1986. Right, yeah, it was it was really cool, you know, to be able to walk into a house like that and have all original everything. pieces of furniture, silverware. Portraits, yeah, everything. everything. Yeah, it, was, it was really cool to, to get, you know, we've done the trifecta. Yeah. So and well, I think there's one more to do, but it's not part of this group. Right, this was the original. This is the, the original founders, founders of Roswell. Jordan. What they did was the one dude um, came Roswell down here, King. yeah, and saw the area, and he went back and he told his buddies, and he's like, "Hey, look, everybody want to get together and come to this place? They found gold not far from there, and blah 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 blah." Y'all bring your families, and they did. Yep. And that's how Roswell got started. But, you know, back in the day when I was growing up in Lawrenceville, um, 
we would go to Roswell occasionally to party or whatever, but I never really spent any time paying attention because, you know, you're, you're a teenager. You, so, you went to Roswell. I you didn't see, see Roswell. Roswell. <laughs> so seeing it now as an adult, especially an adult that loves historical sites and antiques and stuff like that, mm-hmm. it's really so cool to go in there and just see that. I mean, that was the bed they slept in, the bathtub they bathed in. You know, I mean, it was just, it was really neat. Yeah. For me, anyway. I mean, it might, somebody else might find it lame and boring, but. Well, where else can you walk on a 170 something year old floor? That's and, true. You know, it's still there. So it, it was a really, really cool layout. It's right in the square, too. I mean, he picked a prime. Pos- and back then, there was no town, but where he picked. Turn to be right downtown. Yeah, I mean, dead center. So, dead center. I mean, the Cultural Arts Center is right there at it. City Hall's right there. I mean, yeah. and I love the story about Mamie, too. That was one of my favorites because not only did uh, Mary Smith put it in her will that Mamie got to live in the house for the rest of her life, but they also, before Arthur Smith died, they bought her a plot of land and built a house for her. Right. And I think it was like two or three blocks from their yeah, house. We'd like to find that too. Yeah. yeah, they they built they bought the plot and built her a house that they would if she would come and be their cook. And of course, she said yes. And uh, as they got older, because they didn't know how to cook, because you know they were they were know, a bachelor and a bachelorette. Yeah, they got neither, married neither at sixty them, and fifty. Neither, neither one of them knew how to cook, so they brought her in to cook. And as they got older, they gave her a place in the house. And she had her own room, and she was their, their cook. Yeah, so, so I, I, I thought that was kind of... She died. Yeah, I thought that was kind of awesome, so... But anyway, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when we upload new videos. Till next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Stay, Stay spicy. spicy.